from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for ling English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is trains and railroads. This is episode seven, segment one. Today's episode is an introduction to passenger trains. The image on my sweatshirt is that of the Empire Builder, a passenger train established by the Great Northern Railroad. Today, it's still run by Amtrak as the Empire Builder. It's an example of a passenger train, the subject of this video clip. Watch and enjoy. America still has passenger trains. Passenger trains carry people, passengers, from one place to another. In the United States, most passenger trains are operated by Amtrak. This passenger train is arriving at Eugene, Oregon. This train has a name and a special car. The name is the Coast Starlight, and this special car is called the Parlor Car. It's only found on this train, which carries passengers from Seattle to Los Angeles. This car is a place for sleeping car passengers to relax and meet other travelers. The windows are made for scenery, and food is also served here. Some passenger trains carry people short distances. This train in California is called the Capital Corridor. It carries people to Sacramento and nearby cities. There's no dining car and no sleeping cars. This train is a partnership between Amtrak and the state of California. People who take the train instead of driving save gas, reduce pollution, and can relax or read instead of driving on crowded freeways. The Coast Starlight is an example of a long-distance train. As it pulls out of Klamath Falls, let's look at the cars. Behind the two locomotives, we see a baggage car. The cars behind that are the sleeping cars. There's usually two or three sleeping cars on this train. Passengers in the sleeping cars are considered first class, which means they get their meals for free on the train. Sleeping cars range in size from a family bedroom to a small roomette, room for two. Next is the parlor car, the one we described earlier, followed by the dining car. The lower level of the dining car has a kitchen, and that's where they prepare fresh food for the passengers. The dining car is another good place to meet other passengers on the train. Behind the diner is an observation car with a snack bar downstairs. The cars that follow are all coaches with large seats but no special sleeping facilities. There is room to sleep in the seats though and I've been on many trips where I've slept in the coach. Passengers are not allowed in the locomotives. Only the engineers are allowed there. Long distance trains are pulled by two diesel electric locomotives. They're controlled by two people in the cab in the front locomotive, the engineer and a fireman. The baggage car is also off limits to passengers. Amtrak crew members put checked bags here unloading them at the station or transferring them to a connecting train. 
baggage is also called luggage. It refers to suitcases carrying clothes and other items for passengers. Here, a crew member is loading suitcases into the baggage car. This way. The sleeping car has private compartments where passengers can lie down and sleep. In this small room, or roomette, the top bunk is pulled up for headroom and the bottom bunk turns into two seats for travel during the day. Passengers are welcome to eat and drink on the train. But the best place to eat and drink on the train is the dining car. It's a very busy place with exciting passengers eager to share their stories of travel. Waiters and waitresses take your order while the kitchen downstairs prepares the food. Food in the dining car is very good quality and expensive, but sleeping car passengers have already paid for their meal when they rent the sleeping car room so they don't pay again in the diner. From the diner, we enter the viewing car. No matter which seat they're assigned, passengers are free to move throughout the train or to stake out a seat in the viewing car. Note the curved windows at the ceiling. They help passengers see up canyon walls and at towering mountains. Downstairs is a snack bar. This is where you can buy food and eat it at one of the tables. And if no one's eating at a table, passengers can play games there. This is also called the lounge car. Moving back from the viewing car, passengers enter the coaches. A coach is the most basic level of passenger service, but the seats are large and comfortable. You can even sleep in them. The coach isn't as comfortable or as private as a sleeper, but the coach passengers travel just as fast as those in first class and enjoy the same scenery. There are usually three or four coaches on a long distance train. Do you remember what this car is called? What about this one? Passengers board trains at stations. This Amtrak station is in Portland, Oregon. It's served by the Coast Starlight and other trains. Here we see a regional train called the Cascades. Passenger trains take people from place to place, but they also feature gorgeous scenery like this sunset in the Pacific Ocean. Passengers also get to see mountains like Mount Shasta in Northern California and river canyons, like this one in Colorado. Amtrak has been carrying passengers across America for 40 years. I hope you get to be on an Amtrak train. If you have a ticket, just go to an Amtrak station and listen for the conductor. Then hop on when you hear him call, all aboard. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is a good time to write down how much of the preceding video clip you understood. Make an estimate, approximately, what percentage of the words did you understand? Add the episode number, number seven, and the date. We'll compare with previous episodes when we return. <laughs> This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. Are you looking for outstanding photography and a way to strengthen your English vocabulary? You'll have both in Seymour Simon's Book of Trains from HarperCollins Publishers. Each time you turn a page in this book, you're treated to world-class photography. 
One page features a train switching yard in Portland, Oregon. Most pages have written information about the picture you're enjoying and about trains in general. You'll encounter the precise vocabulary of train terminology. You'll also encounter language forms like present tense verbs and prepositional phrases. You'll see how objects are used to describe things by listing their parts. Mostly, though, you'll enjoy learning more about trains and about the various cars on the train. You're also likely to find the reading level understandable. Seymour Simon's Book of Trains is a beautiful book that offers an enjoyable way to learn more about trains. You'll have to get your own copy. I'm too attached to mine. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English a support program for intermediate level English learners who want to improve their English proficiency. If that's you, you're in the right place. This is Episode 7, Segment 2. In the previous segment, I asked you to write down about how much of the video clip narration you understood. Using a percentage works well. So how did you do? Was it 30 percent, 70 percent, 100 percent? Whatever it was, doing these self-assessments are important to charting your progress. When advancing in a second language, it's important to cut yourself some slack. Being a language learner means you're going to have uncertainty. Reading or listening with less than 100% comprehension is normal. If you've been with me since our earlier episodes, you've been asked to make such assessments in the past. Now is a good time to compare today's results with those of the earlier programs you may very well be seeing an increase in the amount of content you're understanding. Here's an example. In the first episode, I entered 60% on April 4th. In today's video clip, I understood about 75%. Now, these are examples, of course. You could even make a graph like this one. This is just an example, but it shows comprehension starting at 60%, then improving slightly in the third episode. Then in the fifth episode shows a dip in the level of understanding, followed by episode seven that rises to 75%. Your graph will show progress over time, your progress as well as your struggles. When I did the episode five example, I was thinking of the video clip about railroad workers and labor unions, which was a departure from the other terms of difficulty. With so much new vocabulary and reference to history I knew little about, it's no surprise that I understood less of what I heard than the other video clips about railroads. You may wonder how watching train videos can improve your English. If you've watched several episodes, you've heard much of the same vocabulary repeated. We've done some vocabulary work with unit terms and action words. We've explored the structure of the language, and we've introduced and practiced patterns of language. We've ramped up the language for some language functions, and for all these reasons, today's video clips may well be easier to understand than the first ones you watched. More importantly, your growing comprehension will transfer to topics other than railroads. Self-assessments like these are important to advancing in the language. As a Spanish language learner, I know how discouraging it can be at times to become proficient in a second language. Progress is not always obvious. Sometimes it can look like you're going backward as your brain incorporates these new patterns and structures. When you do see progress, it's important to celebrate. And if you don't see progress yet, remember that your brain is undertaking one of the most difficult uh, learning tasks learning to communicate in a second language. If you know some English, you can help others get off to a good start in school. Here's how the family of Jorge Montezuma helped him have a good experience in elementary school. He had this to say during a program on RVTV called Adventures in Education. When you came to school, you had quite a bit of English already. Is that because of your sisters helping you? Yeah, mostly Rocio. She really helped me, and Jennifer, yeah. And you, you had a lot of, all of your family had a lot of support. Apparently your parents really care about education. Yeah. 
What, what, what ways has your family supported you through, well, through your school? By te teaching me when I want to say something, I have to raise my hand. When, um, when you want to, like, you, when you, um, she, oh, we used to, um, Rocio, she told me she put, like, little stuff on a piece of paper, and so she, um, I had it to say them, like, she wrote some stuff, and then I had to say them, and so sometimes we ha I had it to, like, go to the bathroom, and so I raised my hand, I told, I told, like, my mom was, like, my teacher, and, um, like, out in my house, and so I raised my hand, I wanted to go to the bathroom, like, I wanted to use something, and so that's how I began kindergarten, and I need some English by my sisters and my support from my parents. You don't need to be an expert in English to support others this way. If you understand even a little of this program, you can be a huge help and so source of support to others, especially to children. This ends segment two with so much to learn from video clips. Let's see another one about passenger trains when we come back. <laughs> This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. If you've taken an interest in the theme of trains and railroads, you can grow that interest with Trains Magazine. This is for the serious rail fan or just anyone who loves trains. Each issue has a main theme, this one about western steam engines clearing the tracks of snow and ice. Since the featured events were for our photographers, there are incredible pictures in this special winter and holiday issue. This issue also features Union Station in Kansas City, a beautifully remodeled historic train station served by Amtrak Southwest Chief during its nighttime run between Chicago and Los Angeles. Trains Magazine is also a good source of finding railroad museums closest to your home. If you want to know more, visit their website. I found my copy at a newsstand and I just couldn't resist buying it. This has been a Ramping Up Your English book review. I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is segment three. As promised, here's a video clip about passenger trains. Passenger trains take people from one place to another. In the United States, Amtrak runs most passenger trains. Some trains have special cars where they have special events. This train is called the Coast Starlight and it has wine tasting in the afternoon. Passengers get to sample wines from Washington, Oregon and California. Passenger trains stop at train stations to let passengers off and to welcome new passengers. Train stations are also called depots. A train called the Coast Starlight stops at Portland, Oregon, where this water park helps people cool off near the Willamette River. If you saw part one of passenger trains, you might remember the name of this car. It's called the Parlor Car, and it's only on the Coast Starlight. The Coast Starlight is a long distance train traveling from Seattle, Washington to Los Angeles each day, a trip that lasts two days on the rails. At times, the Coast Starlight runs right on the edge of the Pacific Ocean, with nothing between the train and the beach. This unforgettable sight, a gray whale breaching in the ocean, was seen from the Coast Starlight. I thought that was a tail at first. Sometimes the most exciting sight is the train itself. There's no wall in your way to see.
so long. The Coast Starlight terminates at Union Station in Los Angeles. If you were boarding the Coast Starlight to go north, you would enter here. If you didn't already have a ticket, this is where you could buy one. If you already had a ticket, this is where you would wait for your train to board. Los Angeles Union Station also serves the Sunset Limited to New Orleans and the Southwest Chief to Chicago and several regional and local trains as well. This huge historic building was constructed in the early 1900s when most long distance travel was by train. These ticket windows were very busy back then. Today they're preserved as history when private railroads carried passengers. This area is called a platform. Here we see passengers from the Southwest Chief to training at Los Angeles Union Station. Some of these people have been on this train since Chicago two days earlier. Here we see train crew members waiting to board their train. This sign gives information about the northbound Coast Starlight, train 14. This is a sleeping car. Passengers here wait for their train to pull out of the station. And you can get specialty coffees. Now the northbound train has left the station and is moving north towards Seattle. Many small towns along the tracks have stations. This is the station at Klamath Falls. The train changes engineers and conductors here. Here, some passengers board the train and soon the Coast Starlight pulls out of the station. Passenger stations can be busy places when trains are arriving or leaving. As you leave the station, please look around, make sure you have all of your personal belongings. Most stations announce the arrival of trains ahead of time so passengers can get ready. In most small stations, the platform is located outside where passengers wait for their train. Be sure you get on the train on time or it'll leave without you. In part one of this program, we listed some of the cars you find on passenger trains. On some long distance trains, there's even a movie theater in one of the cars. Now let's look at some of the people who work on passenger trains. This is one of the waiters of the dining car. There's also a cook who works at the kitchen. Here's a car attendant. He helps passengers enjoy their trip. Car attendant. Oh, and what's your name? My name is Anthony. Anthony, nice right. to meet you. Notice the hats that these crew members wear. These are conductors. They're in charge of the train. Folks, you need to talk to me right here. Conductors collect tickets and help passengers find their seats. They also remove unruly passengers from the train. And the engineer drives the train. Day and night, Amtrak moves passengers across the region or across the country, giving them the best view possible of the United States of America. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Let's repeat a description activity we did in episode one. We'll describe the passenger train called the Coast Starlight by listing its parts. As with the similar task on freight trains, we'll use the words consists of to begin our description, ramping up from using just the word has. 
The Coast Starlight consists of two locomotives, a baggage car, three sleeping cars, and a parlor car. It's also made up of a dining car, sightseeing lounge car, and four coaches. Notice that I use the words is made up of to avoid overusing the words consists of. You always want to vary your wording when you're taking your English to a higher level. I also broke the description into two sentences to avoid mating, making one long list in one sentence. Visit my website, letscreate.org, for a list of passenger train cars. Making your own sentences will be good practice. If you want to push yourself, add some description words using words that describe color, size, and shape. You can extend the activity by listing crew members and their functions they perform. That could be your homework. And this ends segment three of episode seven. You can watch or even download today's program by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. I want to thank my volunteer crew and RVTV for making this program available to our community. And I also want to thank you for watching on Ashland Channel 15 and Charter Channel 182. Join us next time for Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RBTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.